I'd like to talk to you today about how we generate distance. The difference between creating more club head speed and the difference between creating more efficiency. And which one do you need and which one should you focus on if you want to create distance? Stay tuned. This is going to get interesting if you like math. If you don't like math, tune out now, go find another channel, get another video that will entertain you. But this one is really where the guts of distance lies. And folks, if you like the content on this channel, please hit the subscribe button, the like button, leave a comment, ask a question, share to your friends. It'll help the channel grow and you'll get more and more content as it comes out. Now, recently I had a student come in and he was in a quandary. He, he wanted to get more distance out of his irons, but he thought he was swinging as hard as he could and he just couldn't seem to get any more energy to the ball. So we got him to have a few swings on the launch monitor and then I went and I looked at his data and explained to him about what the data was and, and what it meant. So he was producing 125 yards with his 7 iron but he was swinging at 77 miles an hour and that was producing a smash factor of 1.13. Now 1.13 is very low on a smash factor scale. For a 7 iron that should be up somewhere around 1.33, 1.34 in order to be efficient. Now, first of all, I'm going to explain what smash factor is. Smash factor is your efficiency rating. It's how much energy I get out of what I put in. So if you look at ball speed and club speed, ball speed is how fast the ball leaves the club face. Club speed is how fast the club was swinging when it hit the ball. So smash factor is the rating between the two of those, and it's ball speed divided by club speed. So for instance, if you were producing 130 miles an hour of ball speed, and you had a 100 mile an hour swing, then that would be a 1.3 smash factor. That would be okay. Now, if you were producing 150 miles an hour and you had a 100 mile an hour swing, then that would be a 1.5 smash factor. And 1.5 would be the holy grail. That would be the driver and there is no more distance to gain. That is as high as it can go. So focusing back on the 1.13, there's a terrible inefficiency in his swing and his swing speed at 77 was sufficient enough to produce much more distance. So while he wanted to focus on how he could swing faster, I steered him more into let's get this more e efficient and let's see where that brings us. So in order to do that and to focus out why we focused on efficiency and not club head speed, let's look at some math. So to begin with, to produce more ball speed, which is required for distance. Regardless of what happens, if you don't have more ball speed, you can't get more distance. Ball speed is the velocity of leaving the club, and that is your primary factor in creating distance. So we need ball speed. So to go from 125 to 150, we need 25 more yards. Now, his current ball speed is 88 miles an hour. Now, for every mile of ball speed that we add to that, we add two yards. So. In order to get him another 25 yards, we need roughly 12 miles an hour of ball speed. So that would bring us from 88 to 100. So our goal is to produce 100 miles an hour of ball speed. That will give us our 150. So how do we get that 100 miles an hour? Well, we can increase club head speed or we can increase efficiency. And our efficiency is very low. So is that our best option to work on efficiency or can we still add it by getting club head speed? Well, once again, here's where the math comes in. So here's where we go back to grade school and work on our math. If smash factor equals ball speed divided by club speed, then club speed would equal ball speed divided by smash factor. So we know what our smash factor is, is 1.13. And we know what our ball speed is, which is we want to be at 100. So that tells us where our club head speed would need to go in order to produce 100, staying at the same efficiency. And that required club head speed would now put us at 88 miles an hour. So we would have to increase his club head speed from 78 to 88. Now, as a reference, an 88 mile an hour club head speed for a 7 iron is very, very close to the PGA Tour level. So. Can I get an average, normal, occasional golfer up to PGA Tour level speed? Well, that's very unlikely. And matter of fact, I would say it's probably impossible. So increasing club head speed is not our best option. Increasing efficiency would be. So 
In order to get to 100 mile an hour ball speed without increasing swing speed, we need to now figure out what's our efficiency level. Is that attainable? If we end up with an efficiency that's off the charts and that's not obtainable and our club head speed is not obtainable, then we need to kind of figure out somewhere in the middle and maybe bridge both of them. So in order to determine our new smash factor, which would get us to 100 mile an hour ball speed, keeping our current swing speed of 77, then we can do a simple formula. If smash factor equals ball speed divided by club speed, and we know our ball speed goal is 100 and our club head speed currently is 77, then we divide those and we get 1.29. Now, 1.29 is very achievable even for an average golfer. That's just cleanliness of strike. So we can either focus on getting to an average efficiency for a golfer or PGA Tour level speed. Well, I think we know where we're gonna go with this. One is achievable and one is really not. So our goal is to remain at the same club head speed, increase our efficiency to 1.29 through better contact, and that will give us 100 mile an hour ball speed, which will give us an additional 23 to 25 yards. So now we go and we identify once again, and we tackle the inefficiencies. Where are the inefficiencies in this swing? Where is our best opportunity to bring that smash factor from 1.13 to 1.29 or 1.3, which will then give us our 25 yards. Well, we go back again and we look at the swing path and the face angle. Swing path of four degrees across the ball and a face angle of eight degrees open, there's your inefficiency. Our club head speed is okay. We're gonna tackle that. So after explaining this to the customer and jotting down some numbers and explaining how the efficiency is causing him to lose ball speed and that his swing speed is okay, I devised a couple of drills for him to work on his swing path and his club face. So I explained a couple of drills and I explained the process of how we would tackle one thing at a time. We would tackle the club face angle and get that away from being open so much. And then when that was good, we would then tackle the path and move his path from being outside in to a little bit more neutral. And that would produce more ball speed because we have square on square versus open glancing blows. So after about 20 minutes of drills, we then ran some more data and he was ecstatic. He was seeing his ball jump off the club face and increase five yards, 10 yards, 15 yards. It kept inching up as the drills kept working. So after the data, we looked and our club path was no longer four degrees across the ball. It was 0.4. And our face angle was no longer eight degrees open. It was 0.2 closed. So we neutralized our path and our club face. And because of that, our smash factor jumped up to 1.39. Now our goal was 1.29. So we were actually achieving way more efficiency than we set out to. Now, here's where it gets really interesting. In order for the student to execute those drills properly, I got him to start swinging slower because to execute a drill, you need to do it properly. And it's hard to do at full speed. So as we dropped our swing speed back during the drills, he got cleaner and cleaner contact. So in the end, he actually lost five miles of club head speed while he's doing these drills and increased his efficiency much higher than our goal was. So we ended up with 72 mile an hour club head speed and 1.39 efficiency for a total ball speed of 100 miles an hour. We hit our goal. Our distance actually got to 155 yards. Now, I expect this student to get back up to his previous level of swing speed and possibly even more because the swing is cleaner. It's requiring an easier uh, mechanical movement. He's swinging a little bit more down the line. The club face is rotating closed. It's not such a slash and, and smash swing. And if he gets back up even to his previous level of 77, that increase will increase the ball speed again based on retaining that efficiency. And his new distance will be 170. So we've gone from 125 to a potential of 170 with an already guarantee of 155. So this is where knowing your data and knowing your numbers comes in. It helps you determine where your practice and where your training should go. If you see your numbers and you have an exceptionally low smash factor, then adding swing speed is not the answer. You will still have terrible inefficiencies and adding that swing speed will probably just produce a larger slice or a larger hook it won't produce a better shot. And if you look at your data and you see that your smash factor is very high or very good, 
then there's really no need to work on your swing, your mechanics. You need to work on increasing speed if distance is your goal. And if distance is not your goal, then you stay exactly where you are because everything's efficient. So we identified what this student needed. We steered him away from what he thought he needed, which was more speed, and we put him into a more efficient swing, and now everything is great. Now, folks, that's how the math helps us with golf. It lets us know what we need, and then we can judge how much speed do I need to gain or how much efficiency, which one is easier, which one is more likely, which one is more reasonable for me to obtain. Sometimes there's a combination of both, and that's the way it usually is, but for this one, it was very one-sided. Folks, if you'd like help with your game or you want to find out where your true potential lies, give me a shout. Let me help you out. We'll run some numbers, talk to you, explain what's going on, and you will play better golf. I'm Paul Kelly. Thanks for watching.